Greetings, unsettled souls. There is Christelle's pumpkin. Every year you've gotten to see Christelle's pumpkin, and in the way the dates fell, you didn't get to this time. So there you go. And the guys, it is time for the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. That's right. For those of you that don't know, the correct views. At least once. Well, every once a month. Gives to you the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Live on the media speaks, friends. It's that time. Do me a favor, go to themediaspeaks.com if you haven't been there before. I'd like to thank DJ Aaron for his uh, sampling abilities here on this one. Alright guys, how many of you have followed the show with me? How many of you know that I've had so many dumbies that I haven't even been able to get to them all? Well, that is exactly the case. I've been doing dumbies all month long. I'm going to keep on doing the dumbies. Until we get to the much coveted Dunce Cap of the Month award winner, we have the runner ups. All, all month long, uh, the behind the scenes queens uh, bringing us back from the Halloween pumpkin intro. You have to let her know how she liked your pumpkin this year. If you don't let her know, I'll never hear the end of it. Um, Infowars, Paul Joseph Watson. Girl threatened with hate crime charges for complaining about transgender bathroom harassment. It is really hard to do these dunce caps of the month every month because you have to figure out what is the stupidest thing you've heard. And this month, for, th for some reason, I've been inundated. They've been everywhere. Y you go through them and just when you think that people can't get any dumber, they do. Um, it's going to be important for you guys. Do me a favor if you watch the show all the time. i got a surprise for you next month. How's that? A surprise. So what I need you to do is go back... It started in January of 2013, and watch all of the Dunks Caps of the Month Awards, because I'm going to need you to be up to date on them for a surprise I'm doing uh, next month. This is from Paul Joseph Watson of InfoWolves, Watson. Um, female students at Florence High School in Colorado were threatened with hate crime charges when they complained about being harassed by a teenager boy in the girls' bathroom. Now, see... I don't care what somebody wants to do to their own body. I personally think that if you're a guy and you get your schlong cut off, you're not a girl. You're just a mutilated guy. But that's just me. If that's what you want to do, go right ahead and do it. However, this notion we have that I identify with the other gender is for the birds. Okay? You can't... I, I can't... Uh, decide that I was I was born a woman, so I'm, I wasn't born a woman, but I'm going to feel like a woman any more than I can decide that I want to get money to go to college from the uh, what is that the, the, the money you get if you're an American Indian. Uh, but what if I just relate to the Indians more? For those of you wondering, my heritage is part Mayan, we believe. Um, but in any event. You, you don't just get to relate to somebody and decide that's where you go. If you were born with a schling, then you go into the men's room. That's enough of it. I don't care who it offends. Initial complaints about the transgender student's behavior towards the girls were made by their parents, who were told by the school that the boys' transgender rights trump the privacy rights of their daughters. Aww. Yeah, he, he probably just wanted to see their daughters. I mean see them. When the female students continued to complain about the harassment, the school, who almost won the Dunce Cap of the Month award, threatened to kick them off of the athletic team or even hit them with hate crimes charges if they didn't stay silent. The Pacific Justice Institute sent a letter to the school warning them against prioritizing transgender rights over the privacy rights of female students. Exactly. Uh, I personally am for unisex bathrooms. I don't see the difference. But if you're going to call it male and female, then stick with it. That's a correct view. 
We're not going to stand by and let 99.7% of our students lose their privacy and free speech rights because point three of the population are gender confused, the letter stated. Bingo! The school so adamantly sided with the transgender student that officials even suggested the girls give up access to most of their restrooms altogether, reported CBS News. Although Colorado's treatment of transgender school children is determined by policy, California became the first U.S. state to mandate the law, mandate by law, the right of girls and boys to choose which bathroom they would use regardless of their gender back in August when Democratic bonehead Governor Jerry Brown signed AB 1266. I agree with uh, California Uber Alice Dead Kennedy's uh, Look It Up. It's written about him. It's also known as the Transgender Bill. The law takes effect on January 1st. The Pacific Justice Institute is circulating a petition that would force state officials to put the bill up for referendum. If the group collects 500,000 signatures from Californians before November 10th, the bathroom bill will be temporarily suspended until it's voted on by the state general election in November of 2014. You know what? Idiots. 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 Um, the New American. Is this the winner? of the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, Wisconsin School District launches attack against Christmas music. No, it's not the winner, but it's dumb enough to be. A Wisconsin school district has issued a directive to its music teachers, severely limiting the religious music their school choirs will be able to perform at annual Christmas concerts. Orso School District officials issued the nearly total ban on sacred music ban as a result of what they claimed were concerns over the amount of religious music being performed by choirs in the school district schools. Well, good. If it offends you, don't show up to the show. Bingo. Do you see Billy Graham at the Marilyn Manson concert? No. As a result, reported the Walsall Daily Herald, children's directors have been limited to one sacred number every five secular songs featured at Christmas and other concerts. This kind of stupidity it can only be measured by Pinocchio's nose when they talk about the land of the free. Phil Buke, the director of the choir music at Warsaw's West High School, said the decision prompted him to drop the Christmas program put on by his school's elite master singers choir and to temporarily disband the group until the issue is resolved. Good for him! The group sings at Christmas programs, Bush told the news, the Warsaw newspaper. We sing for nursing homes, grade schools, and businesses. To do that without Christmas music doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. And it's time for us to get angry about these kinds of things because it is the way they say the government is not allowed to endorse a religion you're allowed to talk about any religion you want as I always say you're allowed to worship the uh, the mighty moon men who worship at the shrine of green cheese if you want to and you can sing about it too and that includes the name of Jesus yes you're allowed to say it and they can't stop you eat it um, story leak a woman calls 911 for diabetic fiance Police shoot and kill the man upon arrival. This was my pick to win it. However, there is some ambiguity here about whether or not the person that got shot was threatening to hurt himself, threatening to hurt others. Uh, the family says they don't own knives, uh, good knives, and the guy is supposedly holding a knife. That seems fishy to me. I don't have enough information to say that the cop was wrong. So for that reason, they didn't get the Dunce Cap of the Month award. But they are getting mentioned because as this story unfolds, I think you're going to find out the police were probably worthy of the award in this one. But there is some ambiguity about the facts, so I let it slide. A Georgia man was shot and killed last Friday when police, not paramedics, showed up to a medical emergency call made by the man's fiance. Alicia Heron called 911 for an ambulance shortly after her fiance, 43-year-old Jack Lamar Roberts, no, Ro Roberson, took diabetes medication that worried her. Now, was it diabetes medication or was she stretching the, tra the facts here? I'm going to say why. According to Heron, police soon arrived on scene and opened fire on Roberson in front of the entire family, including Roberson's eight-year-old daughter. They came in and shot him. He didn't say anything. The police didn't say anything. Anything at all. Nothing. It was like a silent movie. 
You couldn't hear anything. All you could hear were the gunshots go off, and I seen them going into his body, and he just fell down, Alicia Heron told First Coast News. According to Waycross Police Department, officers received an attempted suicide call involving a combative man. Police Chief Tony Tanner alleges Roberson jumped towards his officers with two weapons after ignoring commands to drop them. A Roberson's mother and fiancé dispute the officer's claims. He didn't have anything in his hands at any time or period at all before they came. Any time while they were here, anything, said Heron. Police have refused to comment, but according to Roberson's mother, police claim Roberson was holding two knives. And uh, they said, we don't own two decent knives. Well, the police didn't say they were decent knives. So it's possible that the police on this one responding to a suicide call, maybe somebody panicked and then later on they lied and tried to cover for him after they realized that they had gotten him shot. Or the police are as dumb as they appear to be. Which one is it? I don't know. That is why they didn't get the Dunce Cap of the Month award. Before we get to the winner, make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud K when you do so. MediaSpeaks.com first, Bud K second, that's how we get credit for it. When you do so, you'll be helping us immensely, and um, you'll be getting great merchandise. They've got camping needs, uh, all your camping needs met. It's a little cold for that if you're where I am, but uh, like uh, Giselle, who helped me pick this month's dunce cap winner, um, like she is in California, I'm sure you could still can out there if you're a real outdoors person. They got knives, they've got swords, they've got the cat drop spikes, you know, like ninjas drop behind when you're running. Hey, are you the kid that gets bullied at school? Buy some cat spikes, and when people are running behind you, just drop them. And if they don't attack you, they won't be hurt. But if they're chasing you, and that's the only way they can be of any damage, they're going to fall like a big tree. Uh, should you take that advice? Uh, don't take them into school. All right, here we go, guys. PrisonPlanet.com, Steve a. Watson. Was fainting woman in Obama's care speech stage. Now we all know that just like all other great leaders in history, Kim Jong Il, could have laid off Stalin, and they all do the same things, including having people faint when they come around. And of course, the dolt from North North Korea was claiming that flowers bloomed in the middle of the winter in his presence. I was going to give it to uh, Obama for two reasons. First of all, it's obvious that you're faking all these fainting spells. But let's go and pretend that he's not. Let's pretend, let's pretend that these are all legitimate and real. Okay. You thought it would be a good idea to pick a pregnant woman to stand behind a speech in the sun and didn't think that she would fall over or you are the stupidest president in history. He, <coughs> he almost got it. Um... This is like in Prison Planet. It seemed too good to be true as the president was rounding off a speech on how Obamacare is really good and people should just sign up using the telephone and snail mail. A pregnant woman directly behind him began to sway and faint. Again, such a good idea to ask a pregnant woman to stand behind you in the sun. Super Obama to the rescue! The president caught the woman and ensured that she didn't fall over. Ah, uh, hundreds of headlines, so Obamacare works then, I guess. First of all, who in their right mind asked a pregnant woman to stand in front of hundreds of photographers for a significant amount of time? Secondly, take a closer look at the video. After turning to the woman, Obama actually turns back toward the microphone, raises his voice and says, I got you, and then turns back to her, turns back um, to the mic and says, you're okay. Who is he addressing? The woman is behind him. The woman that's behind him or the world's press that is in front of him. That's like saying if, if this computer was a person and it fell over and I said, I got you now. Might that be just a wee bit strange? The quip then followed, this is what happens when I talk too long. Oh, he's so funny. And cue the pandering ovation. The president then wrapped up the speech with a men of identified woman being led away. But this is not the first time that this has happened, or the second time, or the third time, or the fourth time. It happens all the time. He pretty much has prepared a speech that he repeats. And they show here, and you can look these all up by names on YouTube. Obama's Presidential Fainting Woman Act. Obama invokes God and woman faints. Uh, Obama, people faint at my events because I talk. 
and real or fake Obama faintings. All listed it happens all the time, just on cue. Alright guys, on to the nuts cap of the month. The Seattle attempts to condemn 103-year-old parking lot after she refuses to sell to Seattle. Story leak. This didn't win it. No. Why? Because this is more malicious than dumb. This is just evil. It's not the evil hat a month. It's the dunce cap of the month award. This is just evil. But I'm going to make sure it's in here because it's also pretty damn stupid. And I, I, if you watch this show, if you support me in any, in any way, blow the city of Seattle up over this for me. Don't, have to, don't blow it up with a bomb. It, on the phone. Call them. Figuratively speaking, blow up the phone lines. Do not blow up Seattle. Um, blow up their phone lines over this. Um, the city of Seattle is attempting to condemn a waterfront parking lot after the owner, 103-year-old Myrtle Woodson, refused to lease the spot to the city. Scum bastard city people. The city claims the spot, which holds as many as 130 vehicles, is needed to alleviate parking problems during a large construction project. If Woodson accepted the city would allegedly provide short-term parking for customers of nearby businesses, despite the fact that Woltson's lot is already filled daily. It's her money! It's her lot! Let him park elsewhere! Given Woltson's refusal, the city is now preparing to take the property and reportedly plans on using Woltson's $7 million lot to build a parking garage once they demolish Seattle Askins Way Viaduct. The parking is going to continue to be eroded on the central waterfront, especially once demolition on the viaduct begins, Department of Transportation spokesman Rick Sheridan told the Seattle Times. Then you don't do it! The city will debate on whether or not to use eminent domain laws to seize the elderly woman's property during an October 10th city council meeting. According to city records, two other spots near Myrtle's lot have already been seized by the city through eminent domain. While the city claims the move is for the public, the public backlash has already begun against the city's uh, uh, tactics. Thank God, there is still some humanity in Seattle, I guess. After that dolt, uh, Eddie Vedder ruined it. Not sure I understand. The city wants to condemn a parking lot in order to increase parking? A Seattle resident commented. What I'm thinking is that Myrtle makes a good profit on her parking lot that one neighbor was quoted as saying is nearly always full and that SDOT probably offered her pennies on the dollar to lease it from her. Since they didn't like her answer, they'll try to take her property away from her. So what I can glean from this story, SDOT is full of slimy litigious weasels who think nothing of stealing a person's property in order to cover their own shortcomings, added another resident. God bless. Eminent domain should only be used for infrastructure like roads and emergency services. And only as a last resort. Sometimes government through eminent domain acquires property that doesn't even use for the intended purpose and then sells it later as surplus for a profit. Of course they do because they're crooked than their scums. What she should do is open up a parking garage there. Alright guys. Here we go. Are you ready? I hope you're ready. No other way to put it, guys. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award this time goes to a judge. Yes, I know, I know. Many of you are like, ooh, what? You, you can't do that? Of course you can. But I'm going to say this. There's some dumb D music. I'm giving it to this judge, but I am going to say this. Many of the Dunce Cap of the Month award winners have been depressing. They've been sad. This judge is not human filth. This judge is not scum. This judge did something dumb, but it's nice to see somebody win the Dunce Cap of the Month award who didn't really ruin anybody's life. Again, this judge isn't a bad person, but this is the dumbest story that I have heard all month. Again, the last story was more mean. This is the dunce cap of the month right here. Judge from Fox8.com Living, breathing Ohio man to remain dead. 
CNN, an Ohio man who has been legally dead since 1994, will remain so in the eyes of the law after losing his complaint to overturn his death filing according to authorities. In other words, he was standing in front of the judge proclaiming that he was alive, and the judge said, no, you're not. Donald Miller, 61, testified Monday that he disappeared in 1986 after losing his job, leaving behind a wife, two children, and thousands of dollars of unpaid child support. According to James Hammer, the attorney for Miller's ex-wife, Robin Miller, he, has declared, he was declared legally dead eight years later. Donald Miller said he returned to Ohio around 2005 with no knowledge of his legal death and that he had hoped to reestablish his social security number. In other words, he didn't know that he, it wasn't fraud on his part. A legal statute in Ohio, my brilliant state, uh, prevents changes in death rulings once three years have passed, Hammer told CNN. And Judge Alan Davis, the winner of this month's Dutz Cap of the Month Award, ruled accordingly in a Hancock County probate court. In over 40 years, I've never come across a case like this, the judge told CNN. Well, I bet you've never come across an award like this. In the end, though, because of the statute, it was a pretty open and shut case. Hammer recounts that at the time of Donald Miller's legal death in 94, he owned Robin Miller, around 25 grand in child support, a matter which could have been complicated had the judge ruled in Donald Miller's favor on Monday. Well, that's a good reason to call a living man dead to his face. Following the 1994 ruling, Hammer said Robin Miller began receiving Social Security death benefits to support her two children. Well, now you can't get the money off the man either because uh, to reimburse Social Security because you said he was dead. There could have been a possibility that my client would have to pay back what she received to Social Security, Hammer said. We certainly do not want to open that door, so we're satisfied with the outcome. Despite her relief at the court's ruling, Hammer says her client has nowhere will to rule her ex-husband. Donald Miller's attorney was not immediately available for comment Wednesday. He still has 30 days to appeal the judge's ruling. All right, friends, it's a death certificate for Donald Miller, 1994, with an asterisk. You know, you see the little contracts, I got the asterisk in it. The asterisk goes, but he is still alive. Uh, there's Donald Miller at his grave site and uh, written here by Christelle, the behind-the-scenes queen who carved aforementioned pumpkin. Wait, that's me! I'm real! And there's Frankenstein. I'm alive! He's alive! It's the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, and it is being mailed to the Honorable Judge Alan Davis. Let me uh, quick I'll call it up here. Uh, where's my award? I'll call the award up first for everyone so you can see it. Uh, yep. There it is. And I'm going to go ahead and read it for, uh, for those of you that don't know, this is filmed on ultra high def and then high def. If it's got a, uh, if you're looking at a, uh, lower third right now that just popped up, then, uh, you're not on the ultra high def. If you're not looking at a lower third that just popped up, you are. Welcome to the correct views. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know how to use my own computer. All right, I'm going to read what's on the screen here to you. And again, you go through every month, and I need you guys to read all the, or listen to all the past dump, dump caps, because next month I have something special playing for everyone. All right, this is what this says. Dump cap of the month award. Judges have a hard job, and few would argue that fact. Yet sometimes, even with that in mind, a judge will simply stand out as just a little strange. It takes a judge of unmovable determination and a truly unshakable character to sit upon the bench and look a living man in the eyes and proclaim him as deceased. Yet you, Judge Alan Davis, have proven that you are just the man who can and will do just that. It is for that reason that you win this month's Dunce Cap of the Month Award for October 2013. Show it proudly! Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Good night. God bless. Uh, please donate to the show if you can. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Um, click on Bud K. If you want to donate to me, the best way to do that, actually, is to go to the Hotmail, uh, the correct views at Hotmail.com. And, uh, friends, I gotta leave you with this. Hey, Judge!
friends, God bless, and as always, thank you for listening to The Correct.